guests, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so today we're doing another very fun and summery themed firefly painting inspired by my neighbor's beautiful hanging tree lanterns. Uh, we have our three standard brushes and an extra brush today. So I have a large square, small square brush. You can do it with the large square, but I'm gonna use a little smaller one that I have on hand. I have my tiny pointy brush and a medium sized pointy brush as well. Putting that in my water cup off the screen, I have uh, ultramarine blue here, black, white, and a bright green. Check the description box below for a more detailed materials list. Okay, let's go ahead and just jump right in today with the background. I'm gonna start with my largest brush, and I'm gonna go from the top part of my canvas here with an ultramarine blue. We're just gonna go right across the top of the canvas here. Just starting with the backgrounds. Back and forth canvas, brush strokes all the way across the canvas horizontally. And you want that brush stroke to just go actually all the way off the canvas so that it's nice and smooth. Every brush stroke matters. We're gonna work our way down the canvas and we're gonna start to add just a little bit of a gradation to a lighter blue. So just grabbing a little bit of white here. I don't wanna go too light because I want this to look like dusk. Okay, so not midday bright blue, dark blue sky at the top and then just a little hint of the sun still from behind, underneath the horizon. Okay, we're just gonna go down about three quarters of the way with that light blue. Bringing it all the way up to meet the dark blue. And a little bit of water helps that paint go nice and smooth. If you are a total beginning level painter, I'm creating a course right now called Acrylic Boot Camp, which is gonna go in depth more about blending. But this is called a gradation, a really simple one, of just one color to the other. And what I've done here is I've just really not been afraid to bring one color into the other and really get it blending. And this is where it gets a little messy too, as you can see, I got a little bit of splatter. So do make sure that you have some paper down or a tablecloth. And I got my apron on too. Again, check the description box below for information about all the materials that I use. And also check it out, my first 50 patrons on Patreon are gonna get a copy of that acrylic boot camp class for free. We also do intermediate level bonus classes on there that patrons get to vote on. So check that out. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more dark blue at the top here. Oh, this is just the background. So don't get too hung up on these first few steps. We do want a nice smooth gradation. All the way off the canvas. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. I am pretty pleased with that. We're gonna just go with it. Let's go ahead and rinse out our big brush. We're just gonna grab a little bit of black, easy peasy. And I'm gonna come and create a hedge into my blue. 
So you actually want to bring that line a little bit into the blue that you just brought down so that you don't see any canvas poking out in between. You want kind of a wavy top. So this is like the hedge over at the next door neighbors. <laughs> so when I walk my dog, I see many beautiful things in my neighborhood that inspire me, inspired you know, all the time by many things, such as being an artist. So my neighbor has a particularly lovely tree with some particularly lovely hanging mason jar lanterns. Uh, and we don't have fireflies here, so that's kind of my artistic liberty. Uh, and like just kind of my imagination running wild. I did used to live on the East Coast where there were fireflies and they are very magical. Okay, our nice little hedge line. Now this is where I'm going to use that medium sized square brush. So go ahead and retire your big brush for now. And this can't be done if you only have your square brush. You can use that and just go ahead and rinse your brush. But I'm going to grab some of this bright green. This is called a permanent green, but any super bright green is going to do fine. If you're working with primaries, that's going to be blue and yellow together. More about that in acrylic boot camp as well. A little bit of green into our black. Okay, this is a, a hedge, but it's nighttime. So that's the idea here. And again, we're not being shy about blending. So we actually want to see some of the green, some of the black. We want it to be not like all one consistent pattern. So this is what I call crazy brush strokes. You can get your brush going all different directions. That's where you get to find out if your stretched canvas is flat. <laughs> Today, mine is not. Let me know if you're painting along today. I also have a Facebook group called the Art Club where you can share your work. So I'd love to see it if you are painting along. Okay, if you went a little bit too heavy handed, you can always just grab some black again. But that looks good, just creating some texture. It's gonna be really subtle. I find that this green dries into the black like a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add what looks like some pretty bold green just kind of here and there. And it will darken a little bit. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and let this layer dry before we come back and add our next layer. So this was just the background, but give yourself a pat on the back looks great. Go ahead and rinse your brushes and get some fresh water and give this a few minutes to dry and I'll see you in a few. Okay, welcome back. I have a dry canvas with my first background layer. I put some fresh colors on here. So I have yellow now, as well as orange and a cobalt blue. So you can see that's a different hue than our ultramarine that we started with. I still have my black, white, uh, and green on my palette from before. I've rinsed my brushes and gotten some fresh water as well. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our either medium or tiny brush, uh, whichever you're most comfortable with. I think I'm going to use my medium brush, but a small brush will give you a little bit more control if you need it. Uh, and I have my medium brush here and a little bit of black. And we're gonna lay out our tree. Now this is probably the most important little bit here. It's very technical um, where we lay out our branches so that our lanterns can be hanging in the right like relative place. Uh, so when I first did my first draft of this, I had like two, like one smaller 
uh, lantern and then a bigger lantern on the same branch. And I was like, oh wait, that would not happen. <laughs> so it's important that we have a little bit of space here. I wanna have two lanterns uh, in our composition today. We also don't wanna go too high up. Uh, so with this first brush stroke, what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna come up maybe like a third of the way. And then I'm going to gently slope my way up to that right hand corner. So my lantern can go like right there. That'll be a nice, slightly off centered, but still focal point placement. Okay. Just going back over that line to make it a little bit more solid. And you want it to have thinner branches as you come off the canvas. So like real skinny. And you, when you're using your medium sized brush, if you push down harder, you'll get a fatter line. Whereas if you're very, very dainty, uh, you'll get a nice thin line. So we're gonna thicken that a little bit and a bit too. But let's go ahead and paint on our second branch first. So this way I have a little bit of now like a gap where I can put my second lantern, probably about right there. Okay, so we have those two main branches and then we can go, have, go ahead and have one that comes up kind of straight-ish as well. Okay, and then we're just gonna go ahead and fill these guys in with black. And kind of start to fatten up our tree how we see fit. So I think I want to have my tree be actually pretty fat. And have one more branch come off here. Maybe I have one that goes kind of straight up. We are going to have some greenery on here in a second. Okay, with the silhouette, it's actually pretty forgiving. So you can build your tree however you like. Okay, keeping it pretty simple still. Okay. Nice fat trunk. And this branch here is going to be in the foreground, so that'll be the thickest. There we go, like so. All right, that looks pretty good. Good starting point with my tree. I think maybe a little bit thicker here. Yeah. And how about even a branch like this? It's kind of filling in that space. Yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, let's go ahead and do some greenery as well, or in this case, it's gonna be silhouette work as well. Uh, so just go ahead and take your medium sized brush here and we're gonna do just some curved textured brush strokes and we're gonna grab that green just like we did down in our hedge. And we're gonna add Some variation into that as well. Okay, so it ends up being a dark green. We're going to be kind of addressing the edge of our canvas, which I think just kind of adds a nice, like, frame feeling to this composition as well.
Okay. Cute. Maybe also there's a few places where there's branches that would like come forward. Mm-hmm. Maybe right here as well. A little bit of like fluffy texture on the edges. Want it nice and random and not like smooth. Okay. Just going to add a little bit more green and black. You don't necessarily want it to be a dark green all blended as much as you want it to be all kinds of different little shades of dark green. All the way from kind of like a medium green to black. Okay. All very subtle and you can always add a little bit more later too. Okay, looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and rinse that brush and we're actually gonna grab our baby brush. Okay, now we're gonna lay out our lanterns now. So this is another pretty important part. We're going to lay them out with a light gray. So a tiny brush, a little bit of white and black together. And we're going to start with our main focal point one here in the front. Uh, and I think I'm going to do that like right here where this little curve would go over the tree with the branch. Okay, we just want a little, little U shape, upside down U, and then an oval, and then to build our jar, two curved brush strokes like so. It's about the right size relative to my tree this time, not too shabby. And then the bottom there, yeah, that looks super cute, okay. Looking good. Let's go ahead and add one more. And you just you get to decide where your lanterns are hanging from. So mine can go here. I can go here. I think I'm gonna do this one. And same shape, but just smaller. Is it too small? Maybe. Make it a tiny bit bigger. But for the most part, we're just gonna have to go with it. Okay, no big, no big deal. Working with it. Okay, let's hop back to our tree. We're actually gonna mix up a quick brown. Now, if you have brown right out of the bottle, that's great. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix mine real quick though by taking orange and blue and mixing them together, adding a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And since orange and blue are opposites on the color wheel, they mix to a nice neutral brown. Okay, still have my baby brush. And now I'm gonna go into my tree and I'm gonna add some highlights. You 
you really want to go along the shape of the tree here. Very graceful, intentional brush strokes. If you've gone too heavy handed, just grab some black. Just put it right on top, kind of tone it down. There we go. Trunk is going to be straight up and down. Really makes that tree just pop. Much more interesting than just the silhouette, if you ask me. But you could also just leave this as a silhouette. Keep that in mind. If you don't like this step, not only do you not have to do it, but you can also try it and then be like, meh, let it dry for a second and then paint it black again. So give it a try. It's good practice and it's good dexterity uh, development in your hand. Okay, well, that's good for now. We are gonna add one more highlight on our tree later. Uh, but for now, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's go ahead and lay out our fireflies. This is gonna be a really fun part. Uh, so let's mix up a light yellow, yellow and white together. Okay, and now to lay this out, I don't wanna go too far with my fireflies. I don't want to add too many. I did that with my first painting as well. I got a little carried away. <laughs> uh, it's understandable. They're really fun to paint. Um, but I really think my latest composition has like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably like 11. Uh, so maybe between 10 and 15 fireflies, uh, but not 25. Because <laughs> uh, you want to see all of the different elements of the painting here. Uh, so I'm going to start with this bottom right hand corner. It doesn't really matter where you start. And you're just going to do a little yellow dot and then a little spiral coming out of that yellow dot. But you don't want it end ending up bigger than like a dime. And then it can kind of trail off with a few little brush strokes coming out. Very similar to like um, Starry Night. Starry Night tutorial that I did, and it's kind of inspired by that, the layout at least. Okay, so you want to create like these little vortex pretty things. Somehow I ended up with some orange on my brush, I don't know how that happened. Okay, and I'm going to do some that are like super tiny, like that, and then some that are like dime sized. And then just a few little brush strokes. That's it like glowing, radiating out. Got three there. Let's do maybe two up here. Cute. 
I'm not going to go too high up with these either because the fireflies stay pretty low to the ground. little spirals and then just a few brush strokes with it kind of glowing gorgeous yellow sometimes doesn't have very much opacity so it doesn't have very much coverage power so you may end up needing to come back and add just a little bit more I think it looks really pretty and dainty though. So far, so good. You want to make sure that you're spaced nicely too. So it's very deliberate uh, where I'm placing each of these. Really just being as light handed as possible to get that dainty sort of magical look. Okay. All right, let's see, where else should we add them? I think maybe like right here. They're hanging out near the tree. Very pretty. Maybe one small one. Kind of on the edge here. Okay, let's see. I think I'm feeling like one more tiny one. Like right here. Yes, okay, love it, very cute. All right, now let's go ahead and hop back over to our jars and we're gonna do some fun stuff in there. I'm gonna rinse my brush. We're gonna be working with blue now, but it's gonna be this cobalt. Some different hue than we started with for our background. We're just gonna take that pure hue as is. And we're going to add, these are like those little glass marble crystal thingies. You guys know what I mean. You find them at craft stores. I don't know, what are those called? Let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. But this is, again, modeled after my neighbor's lovely tree setup. So they have these gorgeous little handmade jar lanterns that they hung from their beautiful tree. I added just a little bit of white as well. I come up here and just add little tiny dots. And those little jewels. Maybe they're called, I don't know. Okay. Right, now grab some black. We're still working in our lanterns. I rinsed my brush. We're gonna do a little, what is maybe like an electric tea light by making a little rectangle with a little square right on top, almost like a little silhouette of a building or something. Same up here, but it's gonna be so tiny. Rinse your brush again. Now with that same light yellow that you used for your fireflies, we're gonna do the first layer of flame. So start with like the little flame itself. And then with the yellow, we're gonna kind of 
come out with a nice glowing ambiance similar to our fireflies. Everything in our beautiful little yard is glowing. Magical. Very pretty. Same thing, only tiny. Cute. Okay, now we're going to grab some orange and mix it into our light yellow for a light opaque orange. We're gonna add a few brush strokes that orange in there as well, just right on top of all the colors on the inside and maybe one going out, slightly different glow. Okay, let's go ahead and actually hop back to our tree for a second. Uh, we're going to add some highlights there. So let's grab some gray. I want the gray to be pretty light. This is going to be the lightest highlight in the tree. Okay. While I have this gray, I'm going to fix my lantern too because it didn't one is going to go in front the other is going to go behind and just a few brush strokes of that gray throughout is going to be just a really nice highlight again you really want to be as gentle handed as possible can hear a squirrel outside my window. Feels very much like Bob Ross today. My neighbor, not the same one with the lanterns, my other neighbor, it's the cutest thing. He feeds the neighborhood squirrels. And I was walking the dog the other day, and walked past him and I waved and said hello and he just like stared at me and I was like, well, fine. But then I saw why <laughs> is because I was with my dog and we were scaring off the little squirrels that he was about to feed. I was like, oh, that's really sweet. Actually, I thought you were being grumpy and rude. <laughs> so you never know. See, people might they have their own things going on, you know, like. I was really touched by that. I thought that was sweet. Older man. Just toning it down in some places where I was a little bit too heavy handed. Okay, now kind of jumping all around here, but stick with me. I'm gonna go back to my fireflies for a second and I'm gonna add some white. So I'm just gonna do a little white dot in the middle of each of these. That's gonna be the firefly himself. Or herself? I'm not sure if this is like, why do fireflies light up? I think it's a mating call, right? I don't know. I have my dog here with me as always. Of the whole apartment, he prefers to sit at my feet. <laughs> and I do not have the heart to tell him not to. So if you hear him, that's what that is. And now he's decided to go lay in his bed. Okay, very cute. Let's go ahead and add some stars with that white too. I'm just gonna use the back of my brush. Just add another little magical element here. Just the top. 
not too far down. Because we want to know what part is the sky and what part is the fireflies. So our fireflies are much closer in our vision. Very cute. Ooh, look at how magical. Okay, now final couple steps here. Uh, it's going to be inside of our lanterns. And this is really the focal part, focal point and focal part <laughs> of the painting. So make sure you have some clean white. I'm just going to bring a little bit away from the other colors and make sure that it's nice and smooth. Okay. And now the top part of that jar, you're going to have two little lines. And then you're just going to kind of retrace the same shape. Coming down. You can add a little white right in the middle of your flame and a couple highlights in your rocks as well. See how that really makes that pop? So cute. <laughs> okay. That one got a little bit too, sit, too thick, so I'm actually going to add a little bit of gray in between to kind of break it back up. So I want that to look like the like jar lid, you know, with like the threading. Okay, and then a little bit of white also to highlight our little hanging part. There we go. Now we're going to do the same kind of idea with some black. Make sure that it's nice and smooth, but not to the point of dripping. Avoid drips. Okay, going in with that black and going kind of on the inside and on the in between those two little lines at the top and then also adding a little bit of shadows there in the side of our jar. Really tiny, this back one. Add a tiny bit of white in there too, never did. That's maybe a little bit too much. <laughs> blue there we go okay now you want to do this last tiny little step making sure that everything inside of your lantern is dry you just want to take a little bit of white and create like reflective lines Careful not to do too much. Okay, that is just enough in my opinion. And I might even add a little bit more light yellow on the inside here. 
Any other final touches that you need? So cute. Okay. I still have light yellow on my brush. Just adding a little bit more detail here and there. They say the difference between a good painting and a great painting is five brush strokes. So the last few really matter. These are going to be totally specialized usually, so whatever your painting needs, you got to give it to it. Okay, so let me know what you thought of today's tutorial in the comment section. Uh, I would love to see you over in the art club or even on Patreon, so check that out in the description box. Uh, all kinds of information in there, also about all the materials that we used today. I hope you enjoyed, uh, and until next time, stay creative!